For this technique, we're going to do a flat wash, meaning we are going to try our best to make this rectangle a completely solid color with as little value change as possible. For that, I make sure I have a color right here that's already mixed, just about 50% pigment. 50% water, and that should do it. Pick any color you like. I'm going to make sure I use my brush basically from border to border. I'm gonna go all the way across. When I go back for more paint, having that paint already mixed up helps me to be sure and get the same concentration of pigment that I did the very first time. So that's really important for this technique. Get my borders. Come back for more. If you start running out. Back and forth, like sweeping a sidewalk. Just from edge to edge. If your paper is pretty good, 140 pound at least, it will start swelling up a little bit. Don't, don't worry about that. As the, as the paper gathers the water and absorbs it, it's going to buckle just a little bit, but it's also going to let that even out. And that's our flat wash. For this next technique, we're going to do a graded wash. So for this little sample, my goal is to get a really concentrated color with really heavy pigment pigment right here and then as I go back I'm gonna come back to that strip of saturated color with just water and I'm going to let that pigment stretch itself across the space so I'm gonna get a really highly concentrated blue this is the blue that I'm going for right here. So as much pigment as I can pull up into the water, that's, this is what I'm going to use. Dip it in there. Make sure I have plenty of water. I'm probably not going to go back to that blue. Once I have a really heavy amount on this end that's about all the pigmented paint that I want now I'm gonna rinse this brush out I'm gonna dab off a little bit of the water I don't want it to be too heavy on the water either as I touched it you can see that it starts wanting to crawl across the paper which is good that's what I want I want it to be able to move so wherever I put water, I'm telling my pigment, okay, you're allowed to go that far. See, it's gonna stop. Now it needs more water. Water is the, the carrying mechanism of this paint. So to control it, you basically just have to tell it where it's allowed to go with the water. It's not gonna journey across the page without you adding water. I feel like it's puddling here and I feel like I have a really saturated section and then it kind of jumps to a white value or a really high key value. So that's a pretty easy fix. I'm going to go back into my pigment, give it one more dose, dab off some of that color, and then I'm going to keep traveling across. You can tell I'm just going to one direction just want I really just wanted to soften this transition between mid-tones so I'm a lot happier with that than I was initially with it being almost like two block colors so that is a graded wash for this next technique we're gonna do a resist this is a really fun one that I that I enjoy doing you're gonna want some crayons I've also used oil pastels with this and it works really well also 
you just want to do kind of a heavy line with your crayon. I wanted to hold them together because I want them to kind of trail, but that's not as important as it is for this line to be really solid. So just make sure you get all these little white spaces filled in right here. Make sure it's a nice, thick, waxy line. I have a lot of pressure with the crayon, so it's making a lot of excess come off of there. I'm going to use a white because I think I'm going to use either a dark blue or a black. So press down hard. It's not unlike me to break some crayons doing this. I really like to press hard um, when it comes to the resist. You know what? I think I want to use a little bit of tape just to show that when we do our taped borders, that is also a form of resist. So I'm gonna make myself a little cross here. And then I have my white polka dots, I have my blue and pink, and the last and only step for the resist is to show what resists watercolor. So on this particular one, we're showing that waxy crayon will push watercolor back. Also tape will do that. So if you have your color ready, I think I'm just going to paint over it. Make sure you have a nice pigmented amount, maybe like an 80-20 paint to pigment. Got it a little thick there. I want to see my crayon come through. I like using the white crayon because I forget it's there until I paint over it. It's like invisible ink. So I almost always use it. either a really light yellow or a white because just kind of a fun reveal. I like it. But you do whatever design you want to do. I prefer this. And it just looks fun. I like resist a lot and it's it's also good to use um, you can use masking fluid for these but most people in their art cabinet at home may not have masking fluid on hand but usually you have a few pieces of crayon laying around so this is an easy one to tackle for just anybody who just wants to play around more with watercolor this is gonna work really well if it bothers you that there's little pieces of pigment laying on this crayon, take a clean, damp brush. I'm going to squeeze mine out, get most of the water out, and you can do a little bit of cleanup on the crayon just like that if it bothers you. Just wipe it right up. So a dry but clean brush or damp brush works really well to lift some of those areas where it wanted to soak through. For this technique, we're gonna do a technique called bruising. So we're gonna wet the paper down a little bit and then we're just gonna add some paint, use our brush handle to make some marks. So you, you might be able to tell that I'm putting clear water on this surface, but maybe not. Just know that I'm, I'm putting just a, a little bit of water on the surface. I want, I want it to be a lot of pigment. So as soon as I touch the surface, it's going to just spider out and you'll see these little veins of pigment shooting out of there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my handle. I'm just gonna kind of 
press into the surface of my watercolor paper just with my brush handle. So I'm making little pathways for this pigment to travel just like that. So you'll you'll see that the pigment's going to gather in there like like a little ditch or a groove, a little channel for that pigment. And we bruise the paper. We basically press down in it when it was wet, so it's kind of unstable anyway. So it accepts that pressure really well and makes that kind of impact. So as it dries, those lines will will remain. So we've bruised our paper. For the technique I'm going to put in this little sample box, I'm going to do a wet on wet. So what that basically means is we're going to use just a clean water to prep our surface. Oh, mine has a little blue in it. Somewhat clean water. Let me correct that. And prep the surface. Then we're going to put a really bright pigmented line and just watch how it seeps around the paper. Now it's really fun to watch that happen when you're expecting it. When you're not expecting it, it's very frustrating. So as you start learning more about watercolor, just know that when you touch a wet surface with wet paint, to expect this, to expect it to run together and to basically go wherever there is water. Wet on wet. For this next technique, we're going to do some wet on dry. So with our last technique, we made sure that the paper was wet. This one, we're just going to create some line pattern and we're going to use basically just a, a color and we're going to leave the paper dry. I like to show beginners this technique so that they know how to get a soft edge and a really crisp edge, a really clean edge. So when you're learning and drawing how to, how to blend and fade color or value, you're going to use wet on wet. You want it to be soft when you need a really crisp, clean edge, then you, you have to have dry paper. So I want my students to know this firsthand before we ever really start a, a finished, polished painting. I want them to know how to create edges. The difference between good and great are these edges. So I don't want you getting this when you expected this. This takes a little more patience because you have to wait for your sections to dry and then go back to them. But that's how, that is how it's done. Nice, clean, crisp lines wet on dry. Okay, for this technique, we're going to need a little bit of paper towel. I just grab a little piece of like this. If it's, <laughs> I always say, if it's school paper towel, it's not going to suck up the water great. It will still work. It won't be great. So I'm going to show you how to blot and lift. This is our, uh, I guess this is our answer to can you erase watercolor? And the answer is kind of. <laughs> you can kind of do that, but you have to be careful. So for this technique, I like to, it's not really a technique as it is an, an erasing. So I want my students to know that, that hey, yeah, you, you can 
you can correct mistakes. It, it doesn't work perfectly. Maybe it doesn't take you back in time completely, but I mean, we can, we can definitely try to solve some of those problems. So let's say just now I said, oops, I did not want the blue and the green to touch, you know, in some of those, those spaces. So I would grab a piece of paper towel and before that dried, I would just smash it and hold it for, I don't know, five to 10 seconds usually does it. So I try to lift and just kind of smash, blot, whatever you want to call it, try to salvage my painting. Sometimes it happens because we, we accidentally drop a little bit of, like a little drop of paint on our canvas or our watercolor paper and we didn't mean to. You can still see it left a stain because there was so much pigment in that section. But if I had to go over that and kind of repaint, it's, it is possible. At least it gets that pigment out of the way. Say you actually didn't catch it till, till it was dry. So, so this little edge of blue is getting dry already. It just didn't have a lot of moisture here. So as long as I have my paintbrushes clean and damp, if you want to use your brush, I just kind of kind of drag it slowly. And I'm giving it just slightly a little agitation, almost like a tiny little scrubbing. So I'm lifting it off the surface. I'm trying to get as much pigment back onto my brush as I can. If you have an acrylic paintbrush handy, if I really, if I really mess up, I'm going to get my acrylic brush out because it's a stiff bristle. If I want to take off an area that I'm like, oh no, I can't believe I, I painted over that. A flathead acrylic will really lift a lot. So if I do it like this and push it back, just want my paper towel handy to get that excess pigment, clean it. If you don't clean it off in between, it's, it's just going to put pigment back onto the paper. So I'm just kind of going back and forth, scrubbing that paper. Because this is good paper, it's at least 140 pound, it's going to take a little bit of that abuse. I'm just going to blot it just for safe measure. And you can see I got really close to getting that pigment off of the paper. For some, for some beginners, for some students, this is what they need to feel like there's a safety net in this in this media can I can I erase so if that's what you were wanting to know then yes you can erase and it's gonna be fine and it's not gonna ruin your painting so um, continue in watercolor and start having fun with it because it's more forgiving than you would probably think right off hand all right lifting and blotting I don't want yeah. a big outlined cloud cartoony cloud um, we're just gonna basically start kind of tapping the paper just kind of bouncing around making a really organic shape maybe even a little bit unpredictable I don't ever really know what my cloud shape is gonna end up like it's different every time I do it I'm also not really using a reference which for me is scary because who knows what it's going to turn out like. But just a really light line. Because using a pencil on this would leave the pencil marks once you watercolor over pencil, like regular graphite, it doesn't go away. You can't erase it. So I stay away from that. And I'm just going to give myself some little areas where I think clouds could be. Maybe a little, little one back here. A happy little cloud back there. So, what the watercolor pencil does is it'll dissolve into my painting and I don't have to worry about cleaning up old lines or anything like that. It just becomes 
part of my watercolor painting. And I'm happy for that to happen. I don't want big, you know, dark lines to, to stand out in my painting. I want it to look like it's just naturally shaped that way. So for the sky, I, I, I want a graded wash, basically. I want to start with a blue that's a little more saturated right here. And then as I move downwards, I'm going to start running out of paint, but I'm just going to kind of go from top to bottom as I run out of paint. And when I hit areas that are cloud areas, I'm just going to dance around them. I'm going to tiptoe around them. I'm not using my darkest, deepest blue. Uh, I think I'm going to water this down slightly. Just don't want it to be too heavy. Maybe like a 20 to 30 percent pigment. Just a real light bit. Alright, I did get rid of some of that. Yeah, that's pretty light. So I'm just going to kind of creep up to the edges of that. I don't mind if I get into that cloud shape some. It's fine with me. Again, I, like I said, it's just going to dissolve. Going back for a little bit more. Very pale, actually. So if you want to make it more saturated, it's your sky. You just do it how you want to. As long as we see a little bit of graded wash happening, it's going to be fine. Sometimes I'll leave another little gap and think, oh, maybe a cloud will be there too. Maybe not. Alright, nothing else down here. So I'm just going to kind of move on. A little touch more. Maybe just a little water. To make that edge look finished. I want, I want to have a little shadow under these clouds, but it's still a little bit wet, especially there. This is the hard part about watercolor. I guess most students would, would want to come in here and shade these clouds right away because they're just kind of waiting for this to dry. Try your best to avoid that temptation to just wait for all these areas to absorb into the paper. If you don't, when you go back to kind of put a little gray in these clouds, it's going to bleed into the blue. It's not the end of the world in these samples, but doing these samples helps bring out really important stumbling blocks that may happen to you when you're painting. And if we can avoid them now, then we've saved you some heartache when it goes to your painting time. You can just move through those and not have to second guess yourself. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going into my black and I'm going to make basically a gray. Uh, I don't need white to make a gray in watercolor. My paper is all the white I need. I just need to water my black down. Don't forget that you can also make a neutral with any complementary combination. So if you don't have a black on hand, maybe you just have a red and green, just balance those out. They make a pretty decent gray. Maybe even a little bit on the brown side, but it'll work for these samples. All right, I'm getting up rid of a lot of that. It seems kind of dark, but I think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna take away a lot of the I guess a lot of the water in it because I want it to be more like an ink pen. So while I was doing that, that got absorbed. Now I can just kind of bounce along the bottom of my cloud, give it a little bit of a shadow. Try out, um, I mean, you could do a whole sample sheet with just cloud 
types, types of clouds. They're just endless combinations. They're really fun. Clouds can be really fun. It can also be really frustrating because they behave in ways we just don't anticipate. Sometimes as artists, that's where I would need my reference if I was really doing this and, and needed a certain outcome. All right, well, that's how I would tackle a little cloud study.